Welcome to another edition of Staff Inspection. This time, we're going two-wheel. Some of you may remember this bike. I built it on a few episodes of the old Tangents, and you've seen it around doing burnouts on various vehicles. So far, everything's been rad, but like any vehicle, gotta switch stuff up. I have a problem. Uh, I can't leave things alone just like everybody else that works here. So, to catch you guys all up, what this bike originated as was a 1997 Harley-Davidson FXD, Super Glide. The things that we changed on the show are this SNS V111 power plant. This thing has been super sick. I've taken it on a number of long road trips and it does great. It actually gets really good gas mileage too, which is super surprising. And when you open it up, it rips. We've also installed stainless steel Fab 28 exhaust. This thing sounds amazing. It's actually relatively quiet at idle like it's not gonna piss off all of your neighbors to start it but once you crack it open it gets loud as shit and sounds super sick uh we installed this saddleman seat these fox piggyback shocks the rc1 a very important tracker die chain conversion kit because uh this thing would just snap belts if i was to keep a belt on it uh, this thing has held up super well. We installed a Barnett's extra plate Kevlar clutch system. And I think off the top of the dome, that's pretty much it. The main thing that we're going to focus on here today is making this thing actually handle. Because it does have a lot of power now, which is awesome. What sucks is not being able to stop or turn comfortably. This front end is off of a pre-1983 soft tail. So the technology not good. Uh, these brakes, the same thing. They can barely stop the bike. It actually stops in probably triple the time my chopper takes, which only has a rear brake. So uh, that's not good. On today's episode, we'll be installing a GigaCycle Corsair inverted front end. We also have a spoof PosiTrack stabilizer system, Flow Motorsport foot controls, a set of freshly powder coated 13 spoke mags with new tires, and some Biltwell Tracker high bars and Murdoch risers. One of the most important parts of making a Dyna actually handle is fixing some of the stability issues that it has from the factory. Now, this company, Spooth, makes this PosiTrack system. The engine and transmission are rubber mounted to the frame, but what's worse is that the swing arm is not attached directly to the frame. It actually goes through the back of the transmission and then that is attached to the frame by a rubber mount like this. Now, the heim joint and these two steel pieces here are the spooth kit. So basically what it does is it helps stop lateral movement at this rubber joint. So it allows the isolator to still do its job, but it stops it from wanting to shimmy from side to side. And that's super important because as it sits right now, every time I take a turn, especially at speeds over 50 miles an hour, you can feel the, the ass end of the bike wobble back and forth. So we've got one for the rear and one for the front. We're gonna get this on the bike and then we'll move on to the fork legs. We got the new motor mounts and posi track system installed on both the front and if you can see it back here, the rear. So it's getting pretty late. I'm gonna call it a night. Tomorrow will be time for that front end. All right, so the time has finally come to switch the front end on my Dyna. Now, this kit comes with everything you need to get it together, so every piece of hardware, every bolt, and everything's nice and labeled. So it's good to go, even bearings. And lower bearing is pressed onto the stem for you already. Basically, what you get in this kit are the Gigastat trees, all of the hardware, so all the bolts, all the nuts, bearings, all of the brake lines, banjo fittings, you get a new set of rotors, pads, and then they refurbish a set of these Tokiko four pot calipers and extended GSXR inverted forks that have been set up for the weight of the bike. I ordered the two over. These machines, these uh, pretty sweet two inch adapters and I've spoken with a few 
few stunt riders that have used these and uh, they have not been able to break them yet. So I will take their word for it. They're pretty damn uh, abusive on their bike. Before I got into this, because I got the parts a little early, I installed these Flow Motorsport pegs. So the mini floorboards up front, those MX style pegs in the back, these are super sick, super light. The design is just in dope. And then all the cleats are removable. So if you want less grip, you can pull some out. If you want more grip, like let's say if you start wearing them down, you can replace them one by one. You don't have to actually take a grinder to it and then hook up your powder coat. That's sick. Also got the brake lever and the uh, the shift lever. Now I don't have the brake lever installed because our circlip, uh, circlip tool is missing. So uh, yeah. After I laid out all the parts, I decided to do a test drive fit of the entire front end together with my wheel just to make sure that everything lined up. We weren't going to get any interference, nothing hitting each other, and everything turned out perfect. All of these parts that GigaCycle has machined up, everything fits perfectly, especially for these mags, man. And it looks sick. I mean, it looks like it belongs on there, so. My buddies over at Track or Die took and powder coated for me. Shout out to those guys, always coming through. Let's start tearing this thing down. <laughs> Okay, had a good little snack break. It's late, you know. Gotta feed, feed uh, gotta feed the beast. Anyway. <sighs> Okay, so we got the old front end off. Didn't take too long, probably 30 minutes or so, just mostly because stuff was all corroded on there. I'll give you a side-by-side -side of the length comparison. Now, you can see just the difference in length of these forks. Just the fork is like as high as with the six inch risers on it. It's gonna be a significant, a significant difference. The bike's gonna be much lower now. This, it's gonna handle a hell of a lot better. Anytime you increase the length of your front forks without modifying the frame to put the neck at the right height and rake angle, you increase the height of the bike's center of gravity. Now, this changes the trail distance, which affects the bike's handling characteristics drastically. Got her all finished up, got a couple test rides in. After shaking it down, uh, I have to say, this is such a massive difference. I never thought this bike would actually be able to stop or handle. It's nimble around turns, it's nimble at slow speeds. You can maneuver it through traffic a hell of a lot better. I can't wait to actually like, get this thing wide open and see what it's all about. The hardest part about this whole thing had nothing to do even with the front end. It was really with my rear wheel and getting the proper spacing and everything. And it turned out the first rotor that I installed was actually warped. Luckily I had a couple sitting around so. I swapped it out. One of the big things that stuck out to me was the actual weight of the front end, and it felt like it was a hell of a lot lighter. So I took and weighed my old forks, and just the forks in the triple trees alone was 19 pounds heavier than these forks with the brakes, rotors, all of the lines, and all of the hardware. So that's a massive difference, and you can really feel it in the bike. I mean, it's night and day. So super happy with it. Let's cut to some beauties.